Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this month's ATL webcast, The Importance of a Complete Solution, Limbs from A to Z. I'm Steve Weston, ATL's Director of Sales. This month, I want to take a slightly different look at limbs from our usual webcasts. My initial thought was, what makes a complete limb solution? And then I wondered if I could come up with a fun way of presenting all of the things a limbs can do for the laboratory. Looking at all the things a limbs can do for you from A to Z, literally, may be a little disjointed, but hopefully will introduce you to capabilities you haven't thought of or didn't think a limbs was capable of. So where do we start? A laboratory information management system, or LIMS, is software that allows you to effectively manage samples and associate data. In its simplest form, a LIMS provides an electronic database to enter samples, track samples, enter data, and finally report data to the client. However, modern LIMS should be capable of so much more, offering the capabilities to support regulatory compliance like ISO 17025 and many of the regulatory requirements that you face every day. So how does it do that? And what features are available that will improve your workflows, processes, and regulatory compliance? Let's take a trip through the alphabet and see what a new LIMS can do for you. There are so many A's that I've listed only a few here. Of course, all of the analytes you will be reporting will be part of your methods. And if the database gets too big, which by the way is very rare, you'll be able to archive historical data. But there are QAQC items that separate older limbs from a modern system. The ability to put an audit trail on any item you want with the ability to define how you audit it and what you want to report. Record the date and time of change, the person who made the change, why they made the change, and if you require an electronic signature, you can do that as well. Accessioning and processing, or sample receiving, is the section of the laboratory where samples are received, sorted, entered into the limbs, labeled, maybe with barcoding, documented, stored, and processed accordingly. From login to data reporting and everywhere in between, you should be able to attach or link documents for easy retrieval. Lastly, APIs, or application programming interfaces, should be available to allow two software applications to talk to each other. On to B, where we start with backlogs of all sorts for all departments. If you do BOD, Built-in calculators can help streamline your process. But did you know that with the limbs, you can create a quote? Wait, more on that later. Q, I'm thinking. And from the quote, you can generate bottle orders, produce bottle labels, and track bottle inventory. Once these bottles come back to the lab, you can track them through the lab individually with internal chain of custody capabilities. Oh, wait, internal and external chain of custodies. Well, that would take us on to C. You can design COCs to look the way you want them to. The two examples here are very different and yet provide the same basic information. Another C word to really think about is caption editor. A caption editor gives you the ability to call items what you call them, not what some limbs vendor thinks you should call them. A group of samples received at the same time from the same customer may be a login, a work order, a job, an order, a receipt batch, or some other term that you're comfortable with. A caption editor allows you to use your terminology throughout the system, even changing language if that fits your needs. Being able to generate control charts directly out of the limbs saves you from all those manual entries into Excel and trying to remember what control limits are due to be updated this month. Instrument calibrations and all sorts of certifications can be tracked and scheduled accordingly and according to your needs. Built-in calculation allows you to generate the data the way you want to. And calculations can be locked down in the limbs instead of password protecting that you're using in Excel or hoping everyone does manual calculations properly each time. The ISO requirement of tracking incidents, corrective actions, and preventative actions, or CAPAs, 
should be built into the limbs. What good is a laboratory information management system if you track QAQC requirements offline or in another electronic system? Last but not least is a customer portal, allowing customers to access their data 24-7 and freeing your lab staff to do analysis without phone calls interrupting them from customers looking for their data. D brings us to data entry, data review, data reporting. Doing these with the proper data qualifiers and ultimately providing and maintaining complete data integrity. A laboratory's product is the data they produce, so maintaining data integrity is probably the ultimate goal of the LIMS. Some labs must provide a DMR, or Discharge Monitoring Report. This DMR could be a hard copy report sent to the lab or the state, or maybe an electronic DMR uploaded to the state's website. The LIMS simplifies the process, making DMR reporting literally a few keystrokes. One of the big struggles for labs is tracking of training records, tracking the initial and continuing demonstrations of capabilities, and figuring out how to meet other regulatory limbs, excuse me, regulatory requirements is an ongoing struggle. With the new limbs, you can let the limbs do the work for you and even get reports sent automatically, listing all of the upcoming expirations so that you never lose track of them again. The previous mentioned electronic DMRs starts off the letter E and evolves into a broader category of electronic data deliverables. More and more customers are trying to go paperless and want to get their data electronically. The generation of these EDDs can be automated, making preparing them a painless operation. E also covers employees. A LIMS needs to be able to control employee access through a specific login specific roles in the laboratory and permissions in the LIMS. A good LIMS takes this a step further and allows the administrator to easily change people's roles and permissions. This allows the QA manager to go on vacation and someone to temporarily be given the roles and permissions so the lab continues on without interruption. A good LIMS will also allow you to utilize your email system from within the LIMS allowing you to email reports directly from the LIMS instead of moving back and forth from your email and your LIMS and copying files that you want to share. But additionally, you can schedule the LIMS to automatically send final reports and invoices to customers or internal reports like the training report we saw last slide to the people that need to see it. A lot of what I've been discussing so far Describe the flexibility of a LIMS. You want a flexible system that allows you to use as much or as little of the system as you choose. Allows you to name and number things the way you're used to or the way you want to and not the way some vendor thinks you should. When evaluating LIMS, think of how flexible and easy it is to use. The more flexible, the easier it will be to get buy-in from all those involved. A LIMS should allow for multiple facilities to be used in the system and the flexibility for them to be set up with different nomenclature if you so choose. Another F is field sampling and data entry. Being able to download samples to a tablet, get route information, use the tablet to locate samples, log dates, times, collection information, and other field data. Streamlining the field collection process and eliminates all of those issues with multiple pieces of paper and, of course, that really nasty problem of poor handwriting. I know when I was in a lab, anyone who had to try and decipher my chain of custody notes would really have loved me to have an electronic system that captured the information and automatically transferred it to the lens. He shows us some unique capabilities, the ability to create grouped tests, to simplify login, and the ability for customers to request analysis. In a cannabis industry, groups like Cannabis Profile could be used. This group might include potency, terpenoids, pesticides, mycotoxins, residual solvents, metals, and moisture. By grouping all the tests in one group, streamlines sample requests and login. Graphical reporting allows users to create a graphic review of their data. Food manufacturers can plot results on a graphic or floor plan of the process to identify potential areas throughout the manufacturing process where contamination might have been found. The ability, ability to generate reports with serial numbers, store them in the system, is part of data integrity we discussed earlier. How many times do you send out modified reports? 
Can you track them? Do you and your clients know what the most recent version is? As seen in our Titan limbs, you can track detailed changes for all reports and see where, when they were changed and what the status of the report is. The ability is your first H, history, including audit trails, status changes, SOP versions, and those reports we just discussed. A limb should allow for easy access to what was done, when it was done, how it was done, and of course, what was last sent to a customer. The limbs will have the ability to track holding times for preparation and analysis and provide reports for when they expire. Hazmat information can be added to inventory items. This can benefit a lot of labs, allowing you to produce appropriate labels or quickly look up hazard information. The LIMS is also a great place to save your SDSs, or what we used to call material safety data sheets, so everyone will have easy and fast access to this potentially life-saving information. The letter I brings us the capabilities of instrument integration or interfacing, the ability to invoice customers, incident tracking as we discussed when we talked about Campus, and iMobile, our name for the progressive web app that we would use for field sampling as we discussed in F. But maybe the biggest I is inventory control, a way to track all of your supplies in-house from all of your vendors. When set up properly, you can link inventory to methods so that when you set up a prep batch or an analytical batch, you link the inventory used, providing complete traceability of standards, pipettes, gloves, bottles, instruments, balances, etc. Whatever you use to prepare or analyze your samples can be documented and tracked with each item being automatically deducted from inventory. Now you can have complete traceability, get reports when supplies need to be reordered or when lots may be expiring. You can track locations of materials, so if one lab runs out, you can easily see if the same material is in another lab. Labs have been doing this manually for years. Now all this information is tracked and linked in the limbs, making your life that much easier. J, who knew this would be the toughest letter to find something? I came up with a stretch, scheduling and date tracking capabilities for January, June, and July. Complete with calendars, a limbs allows you to see at a glance what samples are scheduled for what days. But you can also have calendars showing expiring DOCs, SOPs, MDLs, standards, calibrations, as well as a CAPA calendar that allows you to track who is responsible for the next steps in the corrective action process. JMP is a statistical software package that can be integrated with your limbs. JMP provides additional statistical and data visualization capabilities that some labs have benefited from in the past. K, well, limited in number of Ks, I came up with a very important K for some managers, key performance indicators, tracking samples or revenue by customer, top tests, turnaround time performance, or any other key indicator on a dashboard provides information about how the lab is performing. Dashboards can be used to share any type of information across the lab. Many labs like to have a live dashboard showing late samples, or simply latest orders to be received in a laboratory. L is where sample tracking all starts. When samples are received, they're logged into the LIM, samples are entered, reviewed, and labels can be generated. The labels, like the one shown here, can be developed by you to look the way you want, another case of how the system should be flexible, allowing you to control the look and feel of the system, and in this case, of the labels you'll be using throughout the laboratory. Another critical L is limits. These include sample limits, upper and lower, lower warning limits, regulatory limits, and control limits. They can be limits on a method basis, customer basis, project basis, site basis, in the olden days, we had project-specific quality assurance project plans that defined the limits for samples in QAQC. Every project could be different, and we had to review them all by hand. Ugh, what a mess. Now you set up the project in the limbs, and your results can be color-coded versus the limits. 
and at the levels you establish up front for the project. This would have saved me a lot of time at the bench going through that stack of quaps. M. Of course, the limbs will allow for identifying multiple matrices and methods, but a few little-known capabilities are also found in M. After the EPA changed how you calculate method detection limits, a method detection limit calculator built into the limbs became a must. Automated MPM lookups, the ability to store MSDSs in inventory, and built-in internal messaging streamlined several of the processes in the lab. A recent addition of Monitor Plus, automated devices to monitor environmental conditions of temperature, pressure, humidity, and light, which take readings every 15 seconds and send the data up to the cloud, eliminate the need to stick pieces of paper on the outside of your refrigerators, incubators, and ovens and have someone take temperatures twice a day. During COVID, this automation became an incredible benefit to the laboratory. N starts with the ability to define nomenclature and numbering schemes the way you want to instead of the way the vendor wants to. A needs assessment, as we discussed last month with Dr. Pasco, is key in N items, not directly part of the limbs, but a critical part of the limbs evaluation and procurement process. We help you determine your objectives, discuss your best approach to implementing a system, and identifying where the risks are and how to minimize those risks. A well done needs assessment makes you more aware of your processes and how a LIMS will help you streamline them and typically bring the team together to better understand the LIMS implementation process and expectations moving forward. If during the needs assessment, we determine that you need to follow NELAC requirements, of course, a good LIMS has you covered. Some of you might remember my webcast last year, LIMS, the Backbone to Your Quality Assurance Manual and Document Handling, where I actually looked at the 28 sections of a QMS and how LIMS can help you. Lastly, a LIMS should provide you areas to enter notes, comments, and descriptions. In older LIMS, we entered data, but in newer systems, you can add written information at all levels so that your results have additional context if that's what you want to do. O is all about orders. I start with work orders or a group of samples that are received together from one customer. But remember, you can call this whatever you want. If you call this a login or a job, go ahead. It's still an order to me. However, there are other types of orders that you can track as well. One of the most important is the purchase order. If you're running out of inventory and you get the message from the system that you should order more, generate a purchase order, send it to procurement, sit back, and wait for the new inventory to arrive. P is all about projects. A LIMS allows you to define all of your customer projects, their unique locations, sites, parameters, priorities, QAQC, pricing, reporting limits, and types of reports to be automatically sent to them. Other P's to consider include peer review capabilities, which allow you to choose if you require a peer review or not. Again, built-in flexibility. But if you require peer review, the system can be set up to mandate peer review of all your data. A LIMS also can provide you with the ability to track your performance testing, both internally and externally. Much like your DOCs that we discussed earlier, you can establish your lab's requirements for tra tracking and documenting performance testing. Q brings us to another major benefit of the LIMS. All of your QAQC, quality assurance and quality control under one roof. As I mentioned, we have done entire webinars on this subject, but rest assured, if you want to track it, control on it and document it, a LIMS will make your life easier. Most all of your QAQC needs will be covered with a LIMS directly. However, as we discussed earlier, if you have additional statistical or visualization needs, the LIMS can be interfaced with third-party systems as well. Although a LIMS is generally not an accounting package, in that it has no ARAP capabilities, it can be used for quoting and invoicing. Setting up the project like we saw in P allows you to generate quotes to your customers. 
Converting a quote to an order is simple, and as we saw, invoicing based on your quote can be automated. Lastly, I introduced the quick launch feature as found in our Titan limbs, where you can scan a barcode and jump immediately to the item artif or artifact that relates to the barcode. It's all about finding ways to quickly get the information you need when you need it. R. As I've been saying throughout, ELIMS can help you follow all of your regulatory compliance, and of course, this includes results entry, results review, and reporting. What makes R interesting is that ELIMS can come with a report writer allowing you, the customer, to design or modify any reports to look like you want them to look. With a little training, you can create and modify reports on your own. And by reports, I'm talking about anything that can be printed from the limbs. This could be a chain of custody, work list, labels, quotes, invoices. Well, you get the idea. If you can print it, you can design it to look the way you want it to look. We'll take a little look at training later in T and V. Not surprisingly, there are lots of S's. Sample scheduling allows you to establish schedules for your routine projects, get them on the calendar as we saw in J, January, June, and July, remember. Pre-log them to streamline your sample collection and login. Subcontracted samples can be tracked just like samples in your lab. SOPs can be linked to your methods, viewed when needed, tracked for review dates, and versions controlled. Storage locations for your samples and inventory can be identified, tracked, and managed. Software as a service, or SaaS, is a deployment option which allows you to access your limbs through internet browsers and have the limbs under the vendor's control. The limbs vendor provides the servers, provides the CALS licenses, does all of your backups and routine IT maintenance, all you do is pay a monthly subscription, and you can access your limbs from anywhere you have an internet connection. The last item I've listed here is service. It is often just as important, or maybe even more important, that the vendor you choose has excellent service and that you develop a good relationship with them. A limbs is a big investment. You want to make sure that there will be people there to support your efforts along the entire process. T. All of the samples get logged into LIMS and the tests required for analysis are assigned accordingly. Tests can have associated methods, matrices, workflows, pricing, QAQC, holding times, bottle types, preservatives required, default standards and supplies used, label types, default reports, and default instruments used. All of your training records can be tracked like we track DOCs and instruments are earlier. Trending analysis lets you trend one or more parameters over an extended period of time for specific customer sites or products, providing insights that might have been missed otherwise. Similarly, temperature monitoring uses the previously mentioned Monitor Plus, gives you peace of mind that your incubators, refrigerators, ovens, water baths, etc. are working properly. U brings us units and unit conversions. Again, you set the limbs up with the units and conversions you use and need. The vendor should not dictate to you what units are available for use. User-defined fields is a critical addition to a limbs that most people forget. A limb should provide open fields that you can define for your purposes. This is another form of built-in flexibility. As an example, we have over 25 fields in sample identification, including customer ID, site, location, latitude, longitude, matrix, date collected, time collected, collector, priority, bottle type, preservatives, etc. But we may have missed some that are critical to you and your lab, so you can use a user-defined field to keep track of that. Sample login provides at least 10 user-defined fields for samples, with an additional four for tests. V gives us vendor tracking, which is part of inventory control, allowing you to identify primary and secondary vendors and all of the associated details for that vendor. 
values refers to raw values, calculated values, and reported values typically used for your analytical data entry, review, and reporting. You can also control, control rounding of these values so that you report the proper number of decimal places and significant figures. VILT, or Virtual Instructor-Led Training, is one of the forms of virtual training that can be offered by a vendor. Verifications are those QC checks that you set up for your specific methods or projects, which will provide color coding for acceptance, flagging, and data qualifiers. If you would like to, and overall simplify, this will overall simplify your data review process, let the LIMS do the work comparing results to your customers' requirements instead of you looking them up in a, those QAPs I discussed earlier. W, work lists to tell people what needs to be done. Workload capacity reports so management knows if you can take more samples, need to buy more instruments, or hire more people are just two of hundreds of reports available on the LIMS. A LIMS can also help you with your waste disposal, tracking sample location, disposition, controlled substance inventory, and ultimately how, when, and where your samples are disposed of. And of course, a LIMS can be deployed as a web version where you access a LIMS through a web browser. Web versions can be implemented in premise installations or in cloud installations. Web version doesn't necessarily mean a cloud deployment, but simply means you can access the LIMS through an internet browser. ATL provides workstation and web systems deployed both on site, premise, or in the cloud, SaaS. Once again, the option is yours to choose which deployment and style works best for you. XML, or Extensible Marked Up Language, is a programming language that can offer, often be used allowing electronic systems to communicate. Remember way back in A when I mentioned APIs, XML is an application programming interface language. XRD interface refers to the ability to interface your instrument to a LIMS, in this case, an XRD typically done by mapping the instrument output file to fields in the LIMS and developing a parser to automate that process. Additionally, one of the barcode scanner and printer vendors is Xenon, my last X of the day. Y brings us to yellow flags. Yellow flagging of data usually indicates a warning limit has been exceeded. Color coding makes data review a snap and you can set up the limits to be flagged when you want them to be. Y is also yearly reporting, whether it be yearly data, yearly sample volumes, yearly costs, yearly samples invoiced, or some other key yearly statistic. And finally, we come to Z, another barcode scanner, printer, and label manufacturer, Zebra. Limbs from A to Z, analytes to Zebra and everything you might need in between. I'd like to thank you for joining me today and hope that you got a little better understanding of current LIMS capabilities. But don't go anywhere. I'll turn this over to Kristen Goodwin for our question and answer session. Kristen, the floor is yours. Thank you, Steve, for showing us all of the great benefits that a LIMS can bring to the laboratory. And thank you to all the attendees for joining us today. We would generally open up this time for questions and answers, but because Steve gave such a thorough presentation and we want to be respectful of your time, we ask that you email all of your LIMS questions to Steve at swesson at atlab.com or give us a call at 1-800-565-5467 for more LIMS information. Thank you again and have a great afternoon.